Hey baby, I hear the blues are calling Tossed salads and scrambled eggs Pizza. Oh, this is the best pizza in a cup ever. This guy's unbelievable. He ran the old cup of pizza guy out of business. Really? People come from all over to get this. Hey, what's up, Reddit Food? I'm here to answer the question, what does the food from film and television actually taste like? My name is Oliver Babish, and today we're looking at the pizza in a cup from The Jerk, the first and most obvious solution to which is to put some pizza in a cup. That's so why I got a pizza here, and I'm going to get it into my cup by any means necessary, grab it myself a fork, and dig in. And I gotta say, oh, we got a straggler here. Oh, 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 disaster. What I was gonna say was, I gotta say, this tastes an awful lot like pizza that's been shoved into a cup. I'm not sure if that was the procedure for the pizza in the cup place from the movie, but I do think that we can do better, starting with those microwave pizza in a mug things that I always knew that one day I would eat. We're combining four tablespoons of all-purpose flour, an eighth of a teaspoon of baking powder, and a sixteenth of a teaspoon of baking soda in a mug, whisking to combine, and then adding three tablespoons of whole milk and one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Again, whisking until it forms a paste, and then we're topping it with pizza sauce and mozzarella and some mini pepperonis that I'm fashioning out of regular sized pepperonis and a paring knife. Then this guy's headed into the microwave for 1 minute and 20 seconds. Just enough time to turn it into a steaming ball of pizza-like matter, which I am going to diligently take a big old spoonful of if I can get past this impossible cheese stretch. Come on, I don't have time for all this gooey cheesiness. There we go. And my first impression upon first bite wasn't bad, but this gooey amorphous blob of pizza dough at the bottom made me feel too post-apocalyptic. It's like a pizza designed by one of those AI chatbots that's forced to read about pizza for a thousand hours. I thought that I could perhaps improve upon this recipe by doubling it up and placing it into a heavily oiled mug that I'm going to bake at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes until it's sort of golden brown a little bit. Top it with the requisite pizza trappings, let the cheese melt before I add the pepperoni, throw it back into the oven to crisp up, and it makes for a pretty good thumbnail. Something that makes your mind's eye wonder, what would it be like to drink pizza out of a mug? But in reality, all I've made here is an unflavored cupcake with melted cheese and sauce on top. And yes, on paper, this is pizza in a cup, but I still think that we can do better. The very loose, batter-like dough reminded me of a very high hydration pizza Bianca. In this recipe adapted from Serious Eats, I'm combining 500 grams of bread flour, 10 grams of kosher salt, and two heaping teaspoons of instant yeast in the bowl of a stand mixer. Then I'm combining 400 grams of tepid water and 40 grams of extra virgin olive oil, which which I'm going to stream into the machine as it is running. This is going to form an extraordinarily sticky dough with a hydration of 80%. We're going to place this in a generously oiled bowl, which we're going to refrigerate overnight in the fridge to help develop its flavor. At least 18 hours, up to 72 if you got the time. Now to make this pizza Bianca into pizza in a cup, I'm going to transform it into trapezino, which is a recently invented hybrid between a pizza and a sandwich, and I think it qualifies. So as you can see, I'm making an Italian-American red sauce with meat balls and sausage, perfect fillings for our trapezino. Click the link in the upper right corner if you want to see how to make that. The next day in our pizza Bianca dough is out of the fridge and we're going to develop its gluten by lifting and folding it on itself six times in a circle every 15 minutes for an hour and a half. Then we're turning it out onto a quarter size rim baking sheet that we have rubbed down with two tablespoons of olive oil. Flip it once to coat it all over with oil and then using our fingers we're going to try to press and spread it into the corners. Realize that we forgot our hair piece, put it back on. Then we're going to cover loosely with greased plastic wrap, letting it rest at room temperature for one to two hours until it's grown and it's puffy and it's nearly twice its size. This is going to take different amounts of time depending on the temperature of your kitchen. Now we want to cut this before baking and to do so we want to trace the outline of where we're going to cut using olive oil. This is going to make sure that our bench scraper doesn't stick when we cut it into four pieces then we're going to cover it with some flaky finishing salt and throw it into a preheated 550 degree Fahrenheit oven, turning once halfway through baking for about 12 12 to 15 minutes total until golden brown dappled with bubbles and crisp. We're going to separate it into its intended four pieces, let it cool for about 15 minutes before slicing in half diagonally, placing a cut down the center of the longest side and beginning to stuff it with fillings like mozzarella cheese. Have meatballs and sausage. 
And yes, I agree that this is basically a glorified focaccia sandwich. There's gotta be some way we can get it closer to being a pizza in a cup. How about, I don't know, placing it in a cup? Mostly so it can be held stable while we top it with a little bit of Parmesan cheese, raise a toast, and dig in. Now I know this one went a little bit off the rails, I know that this is not what you picture when you hear Steve Martin say pizza in a cup, but it is a portable, self-contained pizza sandwich vessel, and I cannot recommend it highly enough. If it were in a cup, it would be a member of the Clean Pizza in a Cup Club. And now real quick guys, I just want to raise a tiny whiskey. <laughs> And tiny whiskey, and toast to you for sticking with me for the past five years of binging with Babish. It's been the most important and exciting five years of my life, and I cannot wait to see what comes next. Mm -hmm.